this is yet another manifestation of the failures of the Obama Clinton Kerry foreign policy. Uh, for, si for six years, we, we followed the pattern of alienating and abandoning our friends and allies, and, and at the same time, coddling up to and appeasing those who are enemies of this country. And it's a consistent pattern. First, it was Russia, then it was Iran, now it's Cuba. Yeah, absolutely. And as we introduce uh, Dinesh D'Souza, um, Dinesh just had uh, Mike Mukasey, the former Attorney General of the U.S., on, and he said, uh, you know, th there's not one tyrannical regime that Obama hasn't, you know, uh, tipped his cap to, as he put it. And he said, I don't see where it's going to stop. I, I agree completely. And in fact, uh, you know, this becomes also a little bit of a, a vindication of the thesis of the movie 2016, where I argued that Obama was uh, a militant anti-colonialist. And at the time, there were even some conservatives who felt, gee, no, no, he's a civil rights guy, Dinesh. He's, you know, he's much more the product of Selma and Montgomery than he is the product of the third world. But we see now, when we listen carefully to Obama's rhetoric, that this anti-colonialism stuff is a bigger theme with him than anything that's happened in this country. Yeah, didn't he say something in his speech yesterday about, um, about how this, you know, let's just forget about, uh, I don't know, kind of he, he equated <laughs> colonialism and communism and, and used it in the same sentence. Did I hear that somewhere? Oh, no, it was right in the speech. He was basically talking about the fact he was, first of all, treating these things uh, as if anything that happened before he was born is something that he doesn't really want to deal with. So he made some idiotic comment to the effect that this relates to things that are so old that they go back to before we were even born. Well, so right. Does 50 years ago. So right. Does 50 the years American ago. Founding, uh, you know, so does the railroads. Uh, we're living with a lot of things that started before Obama was born, and that doesn't mean that they are not relevant to our lives today. But yeah, he specifically referred to the legacy of colonialism as though our opposition to Cuba was somehow generated by some kind of mindless uh, attempt to extend American colonialism uh, through the uh, through the continent. Yeah. All right. So so. This is nothing more than what, what Senator Menendez said it is. It's a, it's a blatant reward for totalitarianism. This is not going to help the people of Cuba. What, they're going to be able to hawk their T-shirts and send their kids out to beg for money from Americans on the streets of Cuba when they vacation there? How is this helping the people of Cuba? Uh, Steve, I don't think it's intended to. I mean, uh, this goes back to something that's very hard to believe about our president, and that is that not because he's... Uh, a secret Muslim, I don't believe, not because he's a traitor, but he is ideologically committed to shrinking the power and influence of the United States. In other words, not only is he a global economic redistributor, he's a power redistributor. And, and, and if you put that uh, lens on, if you put those spectacles on, you'll begin to see that pretty much everything that he does on the foreign policy stage makes sense. Otherwise, if you're trying to analyze every Obama policy to see how it helps the United States, you're going to be scratching your head until he leaves office two years from now. Yeah, no, that's a great point, a power redistributor. That, that's, that's apropos. Uh, all right, let's talk about uh, Jeb Bush. What's your take on Jeb Bush if he does jump into this race? My take on Jeb Bush is really simple. Uh, whoever can beat the Democrats is going to be the one that I support for president. This is a case where, in a sense, to me, the American dream is at stake. Uh, I'm going to be looking for the candidate that's the most conservative that could win. Uh, if it's not the ideal candidate, it's okay to me because it seems to me that Congress can drive the agenda. We're looking not necessarily for the person we most want to win. We're looking for the person who can win. Yeah, no, that's a, that's an interesting. Certainly, you know, when push comes to shove, and I and I said this back when it was Romney. I said it when it was McCain. Uh, these are not the candidates I would have wanted uh, from the to emerge from the primaries. But certainly, staying home is not the answer because it gives you what we now have. So I'm with you. No matter who the Republican nominee is, uh, I will support them 100%. Um, now, what about on the Democratic side? Are you? I, I mean, what's your take? How do you analyze this whole Elizabeth Warren phenomenon? Well, I think that the you can see the way in which, I mean, we're looking uh, on the Democratic side to find honest liberals and honest Democrats 
who see that with Obama, we essentially have a lawless regime that's running this country. Instead, the Democratic Party is pushing even further left and looking at Obama and Hillary as sellouts and looking at Elizabeth Warren as sort of the conscience of the party. So I think we're beginning to see essentially, uh, uh, you know, how polarized and how far from the mainstream this party has become and what a demented ideology is now considered mainstream among the progressives gotcha. and among the Democrats. All right, Dinesh, have a great holiday. I thank you very much. The one and only Dinesh D'Souza, ladies and gentlemen. Up next, uh, we're going to hear from Marilyn Ida Horowitz about her great new book. But it seems that everyone with a smartphone is taking selfies these days, right? Am I right? But you could be breaking the law. That's right, breaking the law when you post selfies with your friends to social media. Is that true? Well, we go to Harvard Law Professor Alan Dershowitz for the answers to those questions. Selfies are becoming very popular with everyone. Hey, I'm taking one myself right now. Even the President of the United States uh, takes his own selfies. A selfie, of course, is when you use your own smartphone to photograph yourself alone or with other persons. Now here's the legal question. After taking the selfie that includes other people, perhaps even strangers or famous people, can you circulate the image on the internet and elsewhere? Well, there's no hard and fast rule, but if the other person is aware that you took the photograph, then that person is generally presumed to have consented to its non-commercial circulation. A smile is usually a good sign of consent. Still, you can't use it for commercial purposes, such as selling a product or promoting a business. For example, when uh, David, Big Poppy Ortiz, the Red Sox uh, designated hitter, discovered this, he took a selfie with the president, President Obama, during a visit by the world champions to the White House. But when Big Poppy tried to capitalize on the selfie by using his opportunity to plug a corporate sponsor, Samsung, the White House was not amused and he was told to stop. There were also other limits. If it's a selfie involving someone's private sexual life, the other person has the right to assume that it was made purely for personal amusement and not for public disclosure. Being photographed in a compromising position does not create the same presumption of consent as does smiling in a photo. So remember, all selfies are not the same and act accordingly. I'm Alan Dershowitz for Newsmax TV.